With everything going on in the world right now, 2020 has definitely been a crazy year. With basically everything in the world shutting down for a few months, fans were waiting for what felt like forever just to see some football. And with this, not too long ago, it was decided that the highly anticipated 2020 Ballon d'Or would be cancelled entirely. However, hearing this got me thinking. Looking at how they've managed to run things, how does the organization that's in charge of this award actually function? How reasonable is their causational merit for determining the overall outcome of this award? And last but not least, is it still as relevant as the majority of the football community believes it to be? Hey guys, it's Raymar back again for another video and today, we're gonna look at why the Ballon d'Or should be cancelled forever. As we all know, if there's one award in football that fans are looking forward to every year, it would have to be the Ballon d'Or. For the most part, the anticipation in finding out who would actually be receiving the golden ball thrills fans throughout the world. While, on the other hand, in some years, it's an overwhelming landslide that everyone saw coming. For over half a century, the Golden Ball has represented the finest talent in global football, with some of the most iconic names we've ever heard having the opportunity to raise it and let the world know that they, at least for that time, reigned supreme over every other footballer in the world. The Ballon d'Or, without a doubt, is indeed the highest and most prestigious award you can receive in the game of football. And if by some chance you're watching this video and don't quite understand the gravity of this award, if I were to compare it to another sport like basketball for example, I'd say it's most similar to the MVP award handed annually in the NBA. But even then, the awards aren't quite similar. Does the most valuable player really mean the same thing as the best player in the league? Well, that's been up for debate for a very long time. With the NBA alone, factors such as team performance and success play a huge role in determining who wins the award. But let's not get sidetracked. While many people do know what the Ballon d'Or is and understand the concept behind it, what does it actually mean to win the award? Officially speaking, the Ballon d'Or is an award given to, and I quote, the player who was deemed to have the best performance over the year. So by nature, the Ballon d'Or is supposed to be an award based on individual performance. That much is understood. However, by hearing that definition, I know that many of you watching right now would realize that it definitely isn't entirely the case. In fact, I bet 80% of you think that way, which is about nearly the same percentage of you watching and listening right now that still aren't subscribed to my channel. Like, come on. But anyways, it isn't a secret that many outside factors than just a player's individual performance have definitely affected the outcome of the award. If we want to truly analyze the award, we need to look at its history and understand the standards as well as how it has changed over the years since its inception. The Ballon d'Or itself goes all the way back to 1956 and since then has made a few but nonetheless significant changes during the course of its existence. Originally from 1956 to 2006, which is a span of half a century, the award was based on voting solely from football journalists. You heard that right, solely from football journalists. Not players, not managers, not even referees, but journalists alone. And I'm sure that you can already see an issue with this, as journalism, as well with the media, tend to have a major bias that could affect the outcome. Certain narratives can be painted on certain players affecting their eligibility to win the award, despite the clear and global widespread acceptance that they definitely were the best player in the world during that time. A prime example of this was in the year 2000, when Zinedine Zidane had just led France to winning the 2000 European Tournament, being named the Player of the Tournament as well as winning the FIFA Player of the Year Award, being the best player on his team in both club and country, and the biggest name in global football ball at the time. It had only been two years ago when he led his French team to the World Cup as well as win the Ballon d'Or. But do you think he won the Ballon d'Or in 2000? No. He lost to Luis Figo by 16 votes because of an incident in the Champions League where he headbutt an opposing player and got a ton of media backlash and criticism from it. Zidane absolutely deserved the Ballon d'Or over Figo and any true and biased analysis can tell you that. Based on individual performance, irrespective of how much success he had with his team that year, Zidane performed better than anyone else in the world. He even won the second biggest competition in football. Zidane should have two Ballon d'Ors under his name, but because of what he did, the media decided not to give it to him. 
Another change that's been made was that the award was only available to Europeans until the year 1995. That means players like Diego Maradona and Pele were never able to even have been given the chance to win the award, which I would say is really unfair. I know I get a lot of hate for the videos I've made about those two, but I truly believe they are one of football's all-time greatest and would have definitely, beyond any doubt in my mind, won multiple Ballon d'Ors. Fun fact was, a voting was done that would add theoretical eligibility to players like Pele and Maradona by 30 previous Ballon d'Or winners, and Pele got the most votes, followed by Maradona and then Cruyff. Another inconsistency with the award is that over time we've seen some undeniable evidence that the award is not only influenced by individual performance, but by team success as well. What's worse is that they don't even follow this on some years. They like to contradict themselves with their decisions and remain overall inconsistent. But before you tell me I have personal problems and my opinion is biased, there have been some clear-cut cases in which it is blatantly obvious which I will talk about and show examples of. For example, in some years, the criteria is incredibly inconsistent. Like in 2018, when Luka Modric won the Ballon d'Or, it was heavily influenced by his World Cup run. Now, I understand that the World Cup has much more weight in each match than in one regular season, and I know that Modric played the best in the tournament. So if we look at their performances, why did Messi place fifth in Ballon d'Or voting, and why did Ronaldo not win when he set a World Cup record, as well as having the second or third best season of his career that year. In the same note, Andres Iniesta won the World Cup altogether in 2010 and managed to only get second place in Ballon d'Or voting, losing to Messi. And before you call me a biased Ronaldo fan, it's also very arguable that Frank Ribéry could have won the Ballon d'Or in 2013. Another example is in 2003 when Pavel Nedved won the award over Thierry Henry. Despite Henry having arguably the best season of his career and Nedved even saying, I didn't even dream of winning such an award. I heard about the nominees and being among them, but I did not believe in my chances too much. For me, Henri is the best forward in the world right now. If I had voted, I would have voted for Henri and the other players at the podium. This prompted a lot of speculation at the time that the award was biased against Henri because of, and I quote, non-football related issues. You know what I mean. And honestly, I don't know how Henri didn't win. I'm sure some of you might even have more examples like those mentioned, but for the sake of time, we'll move on. The Ballon d'Or is notoriously difficult for goalkeepers and defenders to win. Only a handful of defenders have won it, and only a single goalkeeper has ever won the award, which, if you ask me, is a huge injustice to the most important position in football. In fact, defenders and goalkeepers rarely even make it to the top three of Ballon d'Or voting. But I get it, fans mostly look at midfielders and offensive players as they're the ones who have the ball the most and amaze the fans with their skills and goal scoring. And let's be honest, no matter how important their jobs are, it's just not as exciting to see a defender make a stop, no matter how crucial it is, when compared to seeing some beautiful moves or see an amazing goal scored. Likewise, no matter how many acrobatic saves a goalkeeper makes or clean sheets he's able to keep, it mostly just gets disregarded as soon as they get scored on, regardless if it was their fault or not. No matter how important the defensive aspect of football is, the recognition is just not the same. It's so much more different from its offensive counterpart that they should be judged differently and awarded differently as well, while still having the same prestige or merit that awards like the Golden Boot or Ballon d'Or give. Although personally, I think from 2008 to 2019, no other player besides Ronaldo or Messi should have gotten the award. Those two are just that great, but it's sad to see so many players go unrecognized because of them especially goalkeepers and defenders. So instead of having the Ballon d'Or, there should be a unified award for the best goalkeeper, because they will almost never get the same recognition they deserve, especially in the past few decades like Casillas, Buffon, Oliver Kahn, and Manuel Neuer. It might not be a popular opinion, but there should also be a unified award for defenders, midfielders, and forwards as well. You could call them the Golden Glove and the Golden Stop, for example. Each position is truly important when it comes to the game of football, and that fact needs to be recognized. A defender should be recognized for what he does to help his team win, and likewise, a midfielder and attacker should be recognized for what they do to contribute as well. 
It might not be a popular opinion, but I just believe that the Ballon d'Or is heavily biased towards midfielders and forwards, and it's sad to see other types of talents in other positions not get the recognition they deserve. So the best solution would be to just discontinue the Ballon d'Or forever and start giving an award for the best in the world at each four different positions. And before you tell me this video was clickbait, I definitely believe Robert Lewandowski should have won the Ballon d'Or this year. After all he's managed to do during this unconventional year of football, with new personal records and a Champions League win. Because as we all know, even though they say it is, it's not truly just about personal performance, which he arguably had the best year of his career of, but his team success played a huge factor as well. So I feel really bad that he couldn't win the Ballon d'Or this year, because he was definitely the closest and almost could have won it. But that's all from me today guys, this video was made possible by Alaric Aguilar, Owen Torres, Louie, Malcolm, and the rest of my patrons. If you guys want to support the channel, check my Patreon link in the description below. Any support is greatly appreciated. I really need your guys' help to reach 300k subscribers by the end of next month. Anyways, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe and turn those notifications on if you haven't already to see the best football documentaries on YouTube. Thank you guys for all the support and I'll see you in the next one.